this is Professor Farhat. In this session, we will discuss the flow of cost, specifically in a job order costing system. Now, the assumption is you understand what a job order costing is because we have a job order costing and process costing. You, you need to be familiar with both, which I covered both of these sessions in a prior, in prior recording. But today, we're going to specifically, theoretically, first look at how cost flow through the system then we're going to look at actual journal entries and go from raw material to finished goods actually actually we're going to get to cost of goods sold we're going to sell that finished goods so as a company as a manufacturing company we're going to be incurring cost well we're going to be incurring all sorts of cost but we can classify our cost under either material labor and anything that's not direct material not direct labor is considered manufacturing overhead now, after we purchase the material, what's going to happen, which is raw material, the raw material is considered inventory. Then we're going to take this raw material. Let's assume we are manufacturing tables. So we're buying wood, wood as raw material. We're going to take the wood and start the process, start to manufacture that table. Now we have work in process, which is also an inventory account under asset. Now we need labor, direct labor to work on work in process. We're going to add the labor cost to work in process. And we're going to see how in a journal entry, then we are going to have manufacturing overhead, all other costs, all other manufacturing costs. That's not direct material. That's not direct labor. It's called manufacturing overhead. And that's also going to be added to the work in process. So we're going to work on these tables, different jobs. Once it's done, once the tables are completed, we're going to transfer them to finished goods. It means they are ready to be sold. That's excellent. It's ending inventory. Notice raw material, work in process, finished goods. They're all inventory accounts on the balance sheet. And for a manufacturing company, believe it or not, if you look at like Ford Motor Company, they will have, or Tesla, they will have those three accounts listed separately. Now, what do we do with finished goods? Well, we keep it in finished goods until we sell it. Once we sell it, we expense it on the income statement in, in cost of goods sold. Now we sold it, it's gone, it's done. This is what we need to do. Now, obviously we sold it, we get some money back. That's the whole process. Then we have other costs such as selling and administrative. Remember, those are called period costs and those costs are expensed. So they are expensed on the income statement in the period in which they are incurred versus finished goods. It sits on the balance sheet until it's sold. This is when we turn it into cost of goods sold. Now we're going to illustrate this whole process through a series of journal entries to show you how the cost flow, and this is the whole purpose, the flow of cost in a job order costing system. Now the good news is process costing system basically follow the same concept, except rather than jobs, what we have is different departments. We have department one, department two, the assembly department, uh, this department, that department, so on and so forth. Now let's start by looking at an example. October 1st, Adam Corporation had $5,000 in raw material on hand. This is what we started with. And we purchased $40,000 in raw material. Well, what's the journal entry? We're going to debit raw material, which is inventory account and credit accounts payable in case we purchase it on account. Excellent. October 3rd, basically two days later, Adam had 38,000 in raw material requisition from the storeroom for use in production. The, these raw material included 35 of direct and 3,000 of indirect material. So simply put, of this amount of, of 40,000 in raw material, we withdrew 38,000. Of the 38, 35 is considered direct material and 3,000 indirect. What does that mean? The direct material is work in process. It goes automatically into work in process. The indirect material, it goes into manufacturing overhead because it's indirect. And we reduce our raw material. Now, if you want to keep track of your raw material account, I'm okay with this. Now you're down to 2000. Now we're going to keep track. Now we want to keep track of manufacturing overhead and work in process because I want to show you the whole process till the end. So under manufacturing overhead, now we have $3,000. Under work in process, we have $35,000. We assume that we have zero beginning work in process. In your textbook on the CPA exam, you might see beginning work in process. Here I'm assuming zero. Again, when I'm explaining to keep the process simple, I start with zero. But you could see a beginning work in process. Duh, it's not a big deal. You can deal with that. Now, before we go any further, I would like to remind you, before I remind you, most likely you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate if you're listening to me right now. That's great. You found me on YouTube. That's excellent. 
Now, it's time to go a step further. Take a look at my website, subscribe. I can help you with your accounting courses and CPA exam. I help many people over the years, whether they are accounting students or studying for the, their exams, to, to help them succeed in their career. Don't hesitate. Take a look at my website. Consider investing. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Connect with me on YouTube. Subscribe. Like this recording. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Now, this is what we have. We have manufacturing overhead of 3000 work in process of 35000 During the month, the employee time tickets included 39000 of direct labor and 10000 of indirect labor. Well, direct labor is considered many work in process and indirect labor is considered manufacturing overhead well what's the entry well we're going to take the 39,000 in debit work in process which is we're going to add it to work in process here the 10,000 it's going to be considered manufacturing overhead it's going to be added to this account and we credit salaries and wages payable or we credit cash if we paid those employees immediately now let's go ahead debit work in process 39,000 debit manufacturing overhead 10,000. Now remember the debit to manufacturing overhead the debit is the actual is the actual account. During the month the company incurred the following overhead cost. Now we incurred additional overhead cost. If it's if it's actual we're going to be debiting the accounts for those actual overhead. Utilities 1500. Depreciation of factory equipment 3000. Property taxes payable on factory, 1200 So notice the word factory is appearing. And here, utilities for the factory, property taxes payable on factory. What entry do we make? Well, we're going to debit manufacturing overhead for the total, credit utilities payable, accumulated depreciation, property taxes payable. So now what's going to happen? We're going to be adding more to our manufacturing overhead, which is actual cost. Actual, this is, again, the debit side is the actual. Now, keep track of these t, t accounts let's move on to the next slide adam uses a predetermined overhead rate of two dollars and fifty cent per machine hour and during the month four thousand machine hours were worked on the jobs what does that mean now we are ready to allocate overhead remember the overhead it's going to go to work in process but companies apply or allocate overhead based on a predetermined overhead rate which we talked about in a prior session the predetermined overhead rate is 250 per month uh, sorry, 250 per machine hour, and we happen to incur 4,000 machine hour. What does that mean? If we take 4,000 times 250, we're talking about 10,000. So we are going to debit work in process 10,000 and credit manufacturing overhead. Simply put, 10,000 is leaving manufacturing overhead. So 10,000 leaving manufacturing overhead, going to work in process. We credit manufacturing overhead, it goes to work in process. It's not this 10,000, it just happens to be a random 10,000. Okay? Now let's keep going in the throughout the process. Now we have work in process and now we have a new account called finished goods and we happen to have a beginning inventory of 3000. I chose to have a beginning inventory for no particular reason. During the month, Adam incurred but not yet paid sales salaries of, of 3000, advertising expense of 1000. Well, you have to understand sales salaries and advertising expense are considered period cost. What does that mean? What do we do with period cost? We expense them. We don't put them into work and process. They are expense as incurred. Therefore, we debit salaries expense 3,000, debit advertising expense 1,000, credit salaries payable 3,000, credit accounts payable 1,000, or we could have credited cash if we pay them immediately. It doesn't matter. The point is they are expensed. Those costs are expensed. Also, during the period, Adam completed jobs with a total of 25,000. What does that mean? It means 25,000 of work and process was completed. When it's completed, it's going to leave work and process and go to finished goods. And specifically, it's 25,000. Therefore, we debit finished goods, 25,000. We credit work and process, 25,000. Therefore, 25,000 left work and process and 25,000 more will appear in finished goods. It means now we have 28,000 in finished goods ready. Now we have 28,000 in finished goods. Adam sold 25,000 in finished goods uh, to customers for 48,300. What does that mean? It means we sold 25,000 of finished goods. It appears it's this 25,000. We're not, we're not being able to sell this old 3,000. And once it leaves finished goods, it's gonna go to cost of goods sold. Therefore, first we're gonna record the sale. The sale is 48,300. It's giving debit account receivable because we sold it on account. 
Debit cost of goods sold, credit finished goods inventory. It means we transfer 25,000 from finished inventory to cost of goods sold. Now, again, there's nothing in cost of goods sold. If there's anything, we can see cost of goods sold. If there's any figures in cost of goods sold, we're just keeping the numbers simple. So you keep track and finished goods, by the way, is 3000 in case you are wondering. And in case you are wondering too, if you wanna go back and we can look at manufacturing overhead, and basically what happened in manufacturing overhead at the end of the day if you notice here we transferred from manufacturing overhead if you remember 10,000 it means we still have a debit balance of 8,000 in manufacturing overhead sitting there it cannot sit there why because at the end of the period you have to close this account manufacturing overhead and this is what we have to deal with in a separate recording where how do you close manufacturing overhead because technically manufacturing overhead is a temporary account it needs to be closed so we need to close manufacturing overhead this is what we'll do in the next recording but what should you do now go to farhat lectures and work multiple choice through false exercises that's going to help reinforce what we just talked about invest in yourself invest in your accounting education it's going to help you with your career it's going to help you with your professional certification it's going to pay you dividend down the road good luck study hard don't you don't shortchange yourself and stay safe